We're back with another episode. We're back with another episode of Boris. And how are you guys doing? I hope you guys had an amazing last week and you're definitely gonna have an amazing this week. And yeah. So today is Sunday. Happy belated Easter to y'all. I'm currently in Easter mode. I just did a little fake photo shoot with my daughter. Well, I didn't do it with her. I did it of her. I had to do some like cute little bootleg thing. I ain't putting it on social media, but it's cute. I sent it to my mom. Um, Sunny's mom. Yeah, it was cute. So now I think I want to do like photo shoots in the house for her or whatever. Because that was kind of fun. And it was quick. All I had to do was give her some milk to calm her down. What else I did this week? Yesterday, I saw my family, my father's side of the family. They got to see the baby. Everybody got to see the baby, even though I'm having, oh, well, y'all don't know. I'm having a sip and see. Y'all ever heard of sip and see? I feel, they said it's traditionally a Southern thing, but I know, like, a lot of people don't do it, but I heard it's common with women who have high-risk pregnancies. They do it. Some people like to do stuff after. I am not going to lie. <laughs> the way I heard of a sip and see is through Real Housewives of Atlanta when Phaedra did it. And I thought it was the dopest thing. And I just love Phaedra. Me and her both is Scorpios, even though I don't fuck around with signs like that. But I love Phaedra. So it was just mad funny or whatever. Um, so it, that always stuck with me when she did that little sip and see. I remember she was um, saying how, lying about how far along she was because she, she had her baby out of wedlock. You know, she's super faith-based faith and all this stuff. But anyway... Yeah, so that's actually how I really heard of a sympathy. I don't know, I didn't know all the traditions of it, but then when I found out I wanted to do that, because, um, um, if you guys, I brought up yesterday, I mean yesterday, I brought up last week that, um, I like hid my pregnancy or whatever, so I didn't do a gender reveal, I didn't have a baby shower of my last pregnancy, I did none of that because I was pregnant around 2020. And I just wanted to like celebrate and I never do anything like I do stuff. I always do stuff in the house. Like I'll plan cute stuff which I love. I adore because this shit. Getting a venue, getting catering and all that shit is like hella expensive. And mind you, I'm a cheapskate so I'll be finding ways to cut corners and shit. So I don't even do stuff that I don't even pay the amount that the average person probably would pay for something. Because I always try to find ways to cut corners and shit. And even still I'm like big. You know what I'm saying? But, um, so yeah, I'm doing a sip tea. I don't know if you guys ever heard of it. I don't know. Do I have, like, some something? Have I ever heard, seen on my analytics somebody from, like, South Carolina or Mississippi listen? I don't know. I got Virginia, but Virginia is very borderline. I feel like, I don't check my analytics. But anyway, um, yeah, so I'm doing a sip and see. I wonder if anybody's ever heard of that. Shout out to Sip and I'm like excited about it. And I just think it's funny I'm doing one. I'm going to have the drinks flowing. I told my mother she needs to be sober. She's going to be sober. Mom's not like a heavy drinker anyway. She don't drink really like that. She drink wine but she don't get drunk. At least I've never seen her drunk. But anyway, it doesn't matter. So I told her I might get her a little caviar because she'll take it a baby. And then we're going to have the bassinet. But Redeem don't like being in the bassinet. So I don't know what we're going to do about that. So yeah. That's only in June. What else? But yeah, I was basically brought that up because I'm like, my whole family already seen Redeem, damn near. But it's more of a celebration, honestly. But that's, I never heard of any other thing that people do after they have a baby besides the sympathy. I'm not privy to anything like that. Maybe I, I've never heard of people doing things after the baby's born. Actually, when I was doing my research, there was something else that people do. Is it called a sprinkle? Yes, yeah, sprinkles, like a baby sprinkle. Y'all ever heard of that? And it's like afterward, I'm pretty sure y'all heard of a sprinkle. Because I feel like that, that is like, I've heard that in the East Coast. I feel like I've even been to a sprinkle. It's like something you do after. And that's people who extra, they be doing a baby shop with a gender the gender the real and a sprinkle. Because the sprinkle is like, you sprinkle them with more gifts and shit. A sip you could bring gifts too. But... Back in the day, it wasn't customary. But yeah, those are the only two I know. Sympathy and a sprinkle. And I feel like it's one more, but I just can't, like, hit it on the nose. But yeah, so I saw my family yesterday. That was fun. And my aunt had this thing called the Oculus. Y'all know, like, the virtual reality glasses. Oh my gosh, it was so fun. And that's not something I would ever buy. My aunt bought it. My aunt Ronnie bought it. And she brought it over to my um, parents' house. And we all like tried to use it and it was so much fun. Oh my gosh. Like it's $300. That's expensive. 
but not bad for that like it's really dope it's reminding me of the metaverse you know how they trying to like, do that with the metaverse like we wear these glasses and like you could like you know live in another universe it was given very much that but it was kind of cool because it felt really real it was dope because i would never do something like that had she not brought it over not not because i have a problem with it i just feel like it's not my first thing to like be like i would watch somebody do it on tv and be like that's cool but i wouldn't have bought it i would have never tried it it's not something i would be like compelled to try so her bringing it over it was kind of cool like i actually really enjoyed it it was so much fun so that was dope i feel like i just i saw my cousins this week too see i'll be up up under my family now that i'm on maternity leave i don't know before i had redeemed I used to love being in the house. Like, my therapist used to be like, Brittany, I need you to leave the house. So, right before I got pregnant, I used to be going to the park. I used to walk. Like, I started being more active. I got pregnant right in, in around the summertime. I got pregnant in July. So, I started being more active going out. But it took me a lot to start going outside. Now that I got this girl, I be wanting to go outside every damn day. Like, I can't. I can't. So, I be going to see my family. I saw my cousins the other day, too. And me and my cousin... Leaky was watching the show called The Ultimatum on Netflix. People, yo, Netflix is really good with reality TV shows. Like, because my hairstylist, well, one of my hairstylists, because I basically got like two. She um put me onto the show The Circle. Or was it The Social? No, it was The Circle. And I, that's a show I would never watch on my spare time. And I watched it. I was like, oh, this shit kind of like, it was like interesting. Like, it keeps you going and going. And we was talking about it. Then my cousin Leaky put me on to Osamato. We watched like four episodes. That show is fucking banana boat. Like, but all of them was dating for a short period of time. A lot of them are really young. Like, one of the girls was 23 talking about she wanted to be married with kids. No shades to anybody who's young, married with kids. Like, do what the fuck you want. But it was just like, it's just weird to see because remember I'm what, now seven years older than her like I'm imagining me at 23 I was scared to get pregnant bitch <laughs> look at me now with a baby but I remember at 23 I was like that was one of my biggest fears was to get pregnant and look at me now I got a whole baby I was so scared of getting pregnant I don't know why it was like a fear like fear factor bitch like please god please I will pop a plan B like it was motherfucking candy bitch <laughs> Okay, so it's just weird to see like these 23, 24 year olds on the show talk about he doesn't agree with me on marriage and kids. Like, well, it's only one girl who's 23, but some of them are 24, 25, which is still, still young in my opinion. Well, to anybody who thinks 25, 24 is not young, you need your ass beat, bitch. Even 30 is young. Per. But, um, yeah, and you guys gotta watch the show, but it was just. It was interesting, and I need to finish watching it, too, actually. But me and her was watching it, and it was like, what the fuck? Um, I went out with my friend Jamil, went to Mama Sushi. I ain't had sushi in 10 months. You know, they say you can't eat sushi when you're pregnant. That was fun. I love Mama Sushi. Mama Sushi is expensive as fuck, though. We was talking about that. I was like, yo, $18 for sushi is kind of pricey, but that shit good as fuck. Um, yeah, so that was that. I had a good week, actually. Hello, good morning. I went out to the park twice. Was it twice or once? No, once. I went to Brooklyn Bridge Park. Love that. It was 73 degrees that day. That shit felt like 90. But I run hot, honey. I run hot, bitch. I didn't have too much surgery, bitch. I run fucking hot. I was like, I mean, 73 is hot, but I was really hot. Like, I had on a little moto coat, and I had to take that shit off, and I had on a... Us like a sundress and it had no sh no sleeves on it and I was walking around with no sleeves on that's a problem like you know what I'm saying that means it's hot if I feel comfortable walking without sleeves on so yeah it was really nice that day thinking about when I was to Brooklyn Bridge Park the shit that happened in New York City in Brooklyn on the train station that man that shot up that shit I know it's a lot of conspiracy theories going on and running around with that shit some of them I kind of believe, bitch. I'm, well, I'm starting to believe, but what I do fucking know is that shit was bananas. Like, I was on my Instagram, follow me on Instagram at underscore barista ram. And on the Instagram story, and I was just like, that shit is weird. Like, all my life living in New York City, I was saying, like, a lot of the shit that be going on on the train station, and for some reason it's becoming news, and people saying it's happening more, allegedly. To me, uh, as somebody who's lived in New York City all her life even you know or i've lived here all my life i don't know what i was about to say what i was about to say but um 
dumb shit be been going on in the train station. It just never really, it rarely makes the news. People try to commit suicide on the train. A lot. I remember one time I was on the train and we were stuck on the fucking train. I was on the A train and somebody tried to commit suicide on the J train at Fulton and they stopped the train. We was, oh my, it was like for an hour. Just because somebody on the J train line, but it was the same stop, they, um, they wouldn't let the train move. One time I, I yo, I was, let me tell y'all, first of all, I got my license when I was 24. And I remember I was 24 because I heard that the average New Yorker gets their license at 25. So I was mad hyped that I got it one year before. <laughs> I was like, I did it before the, the average time, whatever. So, think about that. I was taking the train major longer than I've been taking, than I've been driving or whatever. Like, I, and when I was on public transportation, I was on public transportation, bitch. Like, I would go out almost every day on the weekends. Like, I was so good with public transportation. Like, I wish I was like that with my car type shit. Like, I could literally, if I wanted to go somewhere, I didn't need to look at a map. Or anything I could think of what train what route like I was so good on MTA like oh my I could I would know like the routes of the trains like oh I would have to take the R to the Q the Q go to blah 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 I could take this to this like I was so good with the train because I used to go on it so much when you get a car you become like to me in an odd way more lazy like I like going out but I wouldn't go out as much as I did back in the day like if I wanted to just get something for some weird reason, like I thought with a car I would be more active, but when I used to be on the train, I used to be tight like, fuck, I want this, I gotta get on the bus, but I would do it. And it was just like, and then if I would go somewhere, I'd be like, oh, I should go to XYZ. I was very good with walking as well. Like, I need to, I wish I was like that with a fucking car. Like some people are really like that. They've been driving probably since they was like 16, 18, where they could get in a car and they could like, know how to get somewhere and that's how it used to be before fucking google maps and all this shit like people like my father and them they used to know how to get places they without needing a map remember you had to print out like stuff on hot maps and stuff like but people who grew up in the city they would know how they know how to get places without like needing a google maps or a gps like if everything was to shut down one day they could figure out how to get home and shit like i wish i was like that with my car but i mean i gotta give myself some grace because um i haven't been driving that long in my opinion what 20 almost four years five years i'm pushing five years august probably i think i'll be drive have dro driven for five years i think come august well i got my car in august i got my license in february so technically i might might have hit the february mark but anyway yeah, I was an MTA queen. Like, you need somewhere to go, bitch. I could be your mat. Like, I'm saying, bitch, you come up to, and you know how people come up to you. Well, if if you was from the city, or maybe even in your your hometown, people come up to you and be like, um, do you know where the J train is? Do you know how to get to X Y Z? I could really help you as long as you listen. Like, that was how good I was with MTA. But I say that to say I used to see so much shit on the train and even now because I've taken the train even though I had a car like I had to take the train to the airport because I didn't want to pay for Uber. I had to take the train to work a couple of times like if we had something to do after work I'm like I'm not driving to Manhattan like we all gonna just take the train to wherever whatever the case may be. It was, and even if I had to go to Manhattan I've taken the train several times basically and um it it's still you know the train station it's still the bus bitch the bus got better to me if you ask me like they tell you when your stop is coming it's always been like that but usually the conductor would tell you actually no the conductor would say it, and then sometimes the conductor don't even fucking say it bitch but like now it's on there they have outlets on the bus Dude, i was just telling them, like that is big and to have wi-fi because i remember like if my phone would die or if my iPod would die, because I need my iPod. I said iPod, not iPhone, iPod. Remember iPods? I would be so fucking stressed. Like, ugh, like, and that's dangerous to be walking around with no phone in a train station. Like, the fuck? Or, like, not to have music. And I used to go to the Bronx. The Bronx was, like, two hours from Brooklyn. So, no music for two hours. Like, you could go to another state in two hours. Like, oh my gosh. But... I'm just saying, like, the train is, you know, it's, like, getting better, but, like, now it's getting worse. I think because people have the camera phones, like, we're so inclined to film stuff, 
it seems like thing, these things are going on so often. But when I was on the train, I used to see fights on the train. Random dumb shit. Like, I remember one time I was coming from work in North Shore. I used to come home late. Anybody who worked in retail, you know these stores close at 9. But you got to clean up the store. You're not leaving that store till 11. So, I used to be getting on the train. I remember I seen some dude on the train. Yo, I seen the dumbest shit on the train. And be on that shit nonchalant as fuck. Not scared I'm going to get shot. Not scared I'm going to fucking die, bitch. I was never scared, bitch. I ain't never scared. Like, I get I get on the train, the bus, and not be scared of shit. And see crazy shit all the time. Just sit on the train like, bitch, somebody acting up today, but never scared. And so when that guy did that, it was just like, the fuck? Like, that shit is crazy. And not only that, what shocked me was that I was scared because I had wanted to take the train to the Bronx to see Jamil at Mama Sushi because I wanted to drink and I didn't want to like drink and drive because you know how I can now shit and I don't drink and drive <laughs> drink responsibly but um I want to take the train or whatever the case would be I'm like I can't take the train then that shit happened and I'm like fuck I don't feel comfortable taking the train all my life that I've been taking public transportation I have never been scared to take public transportation yes you heard it here Ever. As crazy as the fucking MCA is, I've never ever woke up and been scared. Even after 9-11, I was barely that scared to get on the train. Like, people were scaring, scaring us like, oh, the train is next. And I still used to get up in the morning and just get on the train. Like, I would physically see shit happen on the train and the bus and still get up every day and get on MCA. But that shit actually scared me. Like, I was like, fuck. I didn't want to go outside the next day because he was still on the loose. It's just really unfortunate. Like... That shit is fucking crazy. And I was pissed. I heard that they didn't have... The cameras wasn't working in the train station. A train station is under a fucking tunnel, bitch. Anything that's under a tunnel, anywhere like anywhere like that, cameras should always be working. Like, I don't give a fuck what nobody say. Like, I was, I was just too stunned to speak on that. As a New Yorker, a native New Yorker, that shit was unbelievable. And... I done seen some dumb shit happen on the train. I'm I'm having flashbacks, bitch. I was just thinking like, to Rod MTA is like very post. It's giving me very much PTSD. Like it's giving very much trauma, like unnecessary trauma. Rod MTA. Like once you a New Yorker and you have to take the train, you're bringing yourself to trauma. Like that's how dramatic that shit is to me. But yeah, you know, sorry to all the victims of that incident. That shit is fucking crazy. I don't know. I can't. I don't want to get into the conspiracy theories because I just don't have the fucking time. But look, I don't put nothing past this fucking country, bitch. And nothing past this damn city, okay? Because New York City is a thunderstorm. But yeah, that <laughs> was my week. Um, it was something. Did I want to talk about anything else? I didn't really see much in the scuttle, but and I feel like I might have missed something. The only thing I saw was with the Trey songs. If I, if I talk about that, oh my gosh, this is probably gonna be a low pie. I don't know. But um, Rory spoke on Trey songs like how he's a scum, he's nasty, and I was been saying that like Trey songs been having too much allegations, bitch, with touching women. Like he the type of nigga that like he think he's so fine. That when he touch somebody or touch a girl or force himself on a girl, he think they want it. Like, sometimes, like, you can look good. That don't mean I want to fuck or you could touch me or you could kiss me. Like, even sometimes, too, some girls are very, uh, they like to, to like, make you feel like you got to chase them. So, you can't just, like, force yourself up on people. But I heard he kind of, like, crazy, though, and rude. It's not even, it don't seem, it seems like he knows what he's doing type shit. You know what I'm saying? Like, the way I'm explaining is that he not, may not be aware. To me, it's given he's aware. And that motherfucker? I don't know. I ain't fucking with that again. But everything else, I didn't see anything crazy. I, I don't think I missed anything. I see everybody's, like, posting up their Easter stuff and all that stuff. But besides that, no. I saw uh, Cardi B put up her son. That boy basically looked like Coach the boy version, which is kind of, like, really crazy but yeah that's basically what he uh looked like to me and is that newsworthy the rihanna incident with asap is dating the fendi shoe wear design designer she don't know with that the thing is it wasn't confirmed 
But how did that even become news? Like, I feel like that must have happened in the past. Like, that's just very suspicious. And the fact that the shave room posted it, even though they say they couldn't confirm it, make me think it's kind of true, but they don't want to say it's true. But they do have, like, a reliable source. Like, I feel like somebody leaked that shit, like a hater. Like, I feel like, I feel, what well, I'm basically saying, like, I feel like it allegedly, like, might be true. Because how did it hit so many outlets? You get what I'm saying? Like, I feel like that shit might be actually true. But... People trying to make it not true because she's pregnant. Because I just think... Because it's very rare these days. Like, unless it's like the wackest media outlet ever. Like, you know, the ones that just want to spill tea. That blogs will post fake news. Like, lately it's very, very rare. And if it's fake news, they usually retract on their statement immediately. Like, it wasn't retracted. It was like, look, we got this. We don't got the, the receipts. Like... It looked like somebody was like it, a reliable source gave it. That's what it was giving me. Cause why everybody put that out there? And look, I don't know. But I will say, Rihanna looked amazing on Vogue. I loved it. I wish I mean Rihanna's a celebrity, so I feel like, cause like somehow it was like maybe two, three outfits I didn't like. And I know she likes exposing her belly. Like me, even though I hit my pregnancy, I'm gonna fuck. Even if I wasn't hot in my pregnancy, I wouldn't want to show my belly too much. Like, maybe for, like, wh when would I ever need to show it, though? Because I was like, maybe if I was going somewhere, but when you're pregnant, you rarely go out. I think she's just a celebrity. She's it's setting a precedent for pregnancy. I see now girls just showing their belly in outfits and shit. And it's just like, girl, not outside. Like, I see, like, the influencers doing it. But it was never really a thing. But I I love a lot of Rihanna's looks. Like, a lot of them. But I guess there was a little bit of a But what are we talking about today? So, this one is very off the fly because I've been thinking about this. Because basically, so many, like... You know, I haven't been up here in a while, basically. And so, you know, my mind wanders. And when I got pregnant, well, when I announced my pregnancy, you know, people didn't know, number one, that I was pregnant. So it was like, oh, shocking. And also, while I was hiding it, I feel, I, it made me think about, like, I was hiding it and I wasn't posting Brit says. So people, those two things... Which I kind of love that because I was supposed to Brit says people was like, "What the fuck is wrong with Britney?" Because sometimes you feel like when you do things, um, people aren't really paying attention, and sometimes they may not be fully paying attention. They're not giving you all their attention, but they give you some of it. Like I feel like people may not listen to Brit says, but they know like of Brit says. Like if you know me, like even some people I see, they be like, "Oh, how's the pod going?" I know they probably don't listen, but they know like Britney has a podcast, like that type of thing. Or some people might know the we're back with another episode. Like, they know that part of Brit Says, which is kind of cool. Because I had a like, couple people come to me and say that. And I'm like, oh, okay. That's fun. Or whatever the case may be. But, um, those two things. Well, nobody knows pregnant. So, it was like, I wasn't even posting Insta stories. I was on full shutdown mode. So, I wasn't posting on Instagram. I wasn't really hitting up people I was dubbing motherfuckers left and fucking right you hear me like if you wanted to go out with me I was coming up with being broke uh COVID COVID you know that what was that one that was like driving the world crazy Omicron remember Omicron bitch everybody had that shit and those are like my two main excuses really I didn't really Oh, a lot of people just didn't ask me anything like but I know people was just like you know checking in on me and I was like damn I remember thinking in my head like damn motherfuckers probably think I'm depressed and I'm really just pregnant I was stressed out I wouldn't say I was depressed I was very happy to be pregnant I was anxious because of my prior history yes I was very scared uh, every week I said I tell people like being preg high risk pregnancy is like being on a reality show. Like, am I going to make it to the end this week? Like, are you going to be the winner, bitch? Like, literally every time I made a week, because, you know, pregnancy go by weeks. I'm like, all right, week 22. Puka's still here, because that's her nickname. Like, I used to call Puka. I used to say, Puka's still here. Week 23, week 24, it's like you on a game show, and you want to be the winner. That's what I felt like. I was on a reality TV game show. Like, so, I wouldn't say I was depressed. But was I scared as fuck? Yeah. And just super anxious. And then I used to go to the doctor every week. I used to be praying. Listen to gospel music. <laughs> I'm laughing. That's not funny. 
there's nothing wrong with praying and listening to gospel music. But I used to do it like before every appointment because I used to go to the doctor literally every week. So every week was just like <laughs> constant on go. But was I depressed? No. Was I stressed? I don't even want to say I was stressed. I would just say I was anxious. Towards the end, the third trimester, yes. I was starting to get very scared, very anxious, very annoyed, very big, very much like get her out my coochie type shit. Or out my stomach. You know what I'm saying? So, I wouldn't say I was depressed though. Sometimes I did get lonely towards the end, but not depressed. But I knew that that's what people were thinking. And you know how sometimes we think things like, and people are like, don't make assumptions. Don't assume what people are thinking about you or don't, you know, like basically like I, like if I say, oh, you know what I really think is going on? X, Y, Z, da, 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 da. And I also hate when people make up stories about people and stuff like that. I, I think I even made a podcast. If you are new to Princess, definitely binge Princess. Like I would binge every season. I would literally listen. This might take some time, but just binge. Um... I hate when people make up people's life, but I say that to say, like, <laughs> my favorite line now that I have a kid and that I hit my pregnancy. These are the two things. This These two things taught me it pays to mind your fucking business. And I'm going to tell you why. Because, number one, I think maybe let's out of 100% of pregnant women, I think, I want to say about 30% of women hide their pregnancy. And it's not for a variety of reasons. They might be ashamed of who they're pregnant by. Um, they might be confused as to being pregnant. They might be in denial. They might be high risk like me. It could be a thousands, re thousands of reasons why people hide their pregnancy. Um, so I think about 30% of people hide their pregnancy. So I just feel like people wasn't expecting that, right? So because you're not expecting something like that, it taught me like, damn, I don't really never know what the fuck people go through. Yes, is my situation, I don't feel like hiding a pregnancy is that unique, but in terms of on a broad spectrum, on a broader spectrum, it pays to like, mind your business because you don't really know what people go through. And I was thinking about it like, people probably think I'm depressed, People probably think me and family is on the brink of a, of, a, of a fucking divorce, a breakup. I was thinking that too. I was like, people probably think me and family going through it or something. Um, just, I just knew that every everything people probably was thinking was the worst. And I know that people always say like, don't make up what you think people think. And blah, blah, blah. And stuff like that. And a lot of times lately, I've learned that, you know... We sometimes believe we we want to believe that we don't know what people are thinking or we don't want to say what people are thinking, which I agree because that helps with anxiety. Like, don't make up nothing that you don't know. And I agree with that 100%. Like, even if you know, don't drive yourself crazy thinking you know. Does that make sense, what I'm saying? Like, even if you really know, don't drive yourself crazy because that does uh, incorporate with anxiety. But... Just a lot of times, like, especially lately, I will think something. And another thing, too, is, like, I hate when I jump, jump, jump. But another thing, too, is, like, you know people. Like, especially now. Like, most people, not most, maybe everyone that's in my circle, in my corner, I've known for 10 years plus. Like, I don't think anyone has hit the 10-year mark at this point. Maybe seven. Not even. See, 19, 20, 21, 22. Yeah, maybe some people 7 to 10 years. That's a long time to know somebody. So you start to, like, know people and you know how people think. Even me. Even me. You know, even while I was pregnant I, even, and through all the stress, I would, if I didn't speak to somebody in a long time or if I didn't hear from somebody, like, people would run through my mind and I will hit them up or whatever. So we all always, like, let me just check in, you know what I'm saying? Um, But I say that to say that, um... I went out to eat with my friend, Jamil. Oh, whatever. She might listen to her. She might not. And she even said, I thought you was probably just going through something. I thought you was depressed because you stopped posting for sex. And 
you didn't want to hang out with me for your birthday, da 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 da. And I was saying that too. I don't know, did I bring that up on the pod? Like, a lot of people might have been mad. No, I don't, I didn't do an episode on like the pregnancy, hiding pregnancy thing yet. But, um, basically, like, she was like, you didn't want to hang out with me for your birthday, blah blah blah. Like, I knew I was gonna cause trouble, but I had to put me first, Lucius. I had to put me first. Cause when you, when you go through something so traumatic like that, and that's something we'll talk about, when, I can't think of a name. <laughs> That's another thing that's why the um the high risk pregnancy YouTube channel is taking so long because I want to come up with a good name for it, and I probably it might be end up being something so straightforward, but um I'll talk about that stuff like when you go through something so traumatic like that, you're not only protecting yourself, you're actually protecting the people around you in a weird way. Even though some people are like don't worry about people around you, like I'm not like that. Like I love the people around me, and I feel like. Was it traumatic for them? Maybe not traumatic. Was it a little like, oh my fucking God. I would hope the people around me was like, oh my God. You know, I didn't want people to experience that. Or like, even when people had to like visit me in a hospital. I didn't, I didn't want people to see me like that again, you know. And, um, I mean, if something would happen, I would have told it. But I didn't, I wouldn't, I, it wouldn't be as painful as everybody knowing and then finding out. You know what I'm saying? So it was more, it was just a protection around all boards. So, whatever the case may be, it just taught me like people probably was making up a thousand different things like, what's going on with Britney? Or Britney quit says because she lazy. Or I don't know, you know, you know how people could be, or whatever the case may be. So I was just like, it's like interesting because I was really just pregnant as fuck. And that's like a big thing to be and, you know, hide it. So it taught me like, Sometimes, you know, people, and that's not the first time I've done something like that. I remember when I was, uh, I had moving and, and these are things that people do. These are normal things people do. But like I said, that's why I placed my, just like, uh, there's a few things like I had kind of had to lay low because I had to handle this or that. And it was nothing bad or serious. It was just something you keep private and there's nothing wrong with privacy and things like that. Or whatever the case may be but it, it just that was one thing it taught me like it pays my business having the baby so now you know like when you have a baby or some people say actually let's let's get into that prior to covid and i was thinking about this the other day people would bring their baby around people no matter what age they was it, it may be very seldom in the first couple of days. But yes, people, mad people come to visit you in the hospital and shit. Your grandma, your best friend, your auntie, your, un your uncle, your cousin. But COVID kind of set us different precedent. Even back then, I was thinking like, people would literally bring you around a baby with the chicken pox so you could get the chicken pox. Would I bring my baby around somebody with COVID so they could get COVID? Like, we would never do shit like that now. Like, we would never bring our baby around a sick baby or something. And people just feel like you can't bring your kids out when they this age and da 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 da. So now, I used to, to some extent, be like that. Like, why the fuck this lady got this little ass, infant ass, newborn ass baby? Like, you ever seen a newborn bitch? And I used to be like, why they got them outside? Like, it was like weird because they look so fragile. But, I had a baby in the house. And I'm just like, I want to leave the house. Like, you get in the house, and then you with the baby. You up all fucking night. They freaking change your sleep pattern. They change everything. I mean, he went back to work. So you in the house alone. You kind of with this baby. They can't really, they can't talk. They don't pay attention to TV yet like that. They don't really, they still learning themselves. So it's kind of like... You want to entertain them. You feel bad leaving them in the house. You starting to feel stuffy. So I don't leave the house. I bring my kids to the park. And I want to. I don't want to make it a race thing. But white people do that shit heavy. And I know that for a fact because where I work is in Brooklyn Bridge Park. And literally in the winter time. When I tell you it was brick. Yeah, I know New York is brick in the winter time. You know when it's a newborn. They usually have them in a bassinet. But they bring their kids out. Rain, sleet, snow. Now it's up to your discretion what you want to do with your kids but I'm just saying people do it and I get why 
especially as a new mom it's just like i want to leave the fucking house bitch like um and i kind of just want her to be out like i'd be i would get like really upset when she's sleeping not upset that's not a good word like i'd be like when do you open your eyes because i want her to see like i want her to see the world you know like i want her to see the park i want her to see the you know the sights that i see but she's a she's a newborn it's not like a fucking dip. also too family was working we had laundry and i'm like i can't do this shit by myself i need help yeah, you can ask your family members to help you to do the laundry and shit like that. But, like I said, everybody, family, friends, different. Like, I could have my mother come. But either way, I would have to take her there. So, Redeem would still have to leave with me. Like, I'm going to have to drive her to the laundry mat. She's not going to push the cart to the laundry mat or anything like that. So, it's like a lose-lose situation, bitch. Like, I'm still, one way or the other, I'm still going to have to go outside. Family still going to have to go outside. Somebody got to go outside. So, I first went to laundry, me and family went to laundry together. We went late in the night because he came from work. It wasn't like, it was late. Yeah, it was like 8 o'clock. But actually, the laundry mat was mad empty. It was like actually the perfect time to bring her or whatever. And I was just thinking that like, fuck, I'm out doing laundry with a newborn. I did it again. I did it myself. I did one load. And I actually enjoyed doing it. We was in the car. Like, I sit in my car in the parking lot. Listen to a pod. She was sleeping. I put her on the carrier. Fed her some milk. It was just like being in the house, but you not in the house. You at the laundry mat. But people tend to like judge these mothers that do this type of shit. And it's like, you don't know their situation. What if they dead ass got to leave the house? Like the laundry got to get done. They don't got laundry. You know what I'm saying? Or they got to go to the doctor. Because at one point I'm like, wait, am I going to have to bring redeem with me to the doctor because i i had made a weekday appointment like who's gonna watch her like and then when they knew you don't want everybody watching your fucking kid too like i was scared my parents watched her this weekend oh i forgot to bring that up too this weekend i i had her stay overnight without me it was like the worst but my parents had mad fun with her but even i was still nervous not because i don't trust my parents it's just like She's fucking a newborn. Like, I just got the kid. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So, basically, I'm saying, like, it pays to, like, my was Like, I don't know what these parents are going through. I don't know why they got their kids out of five days. Oh, they might not have the way to watch them. Depending on, you know, when they're born. Especially, like, winter or fall. You know, people are working around this time. Like, you know, and people got shit to do. Like... And that's they fucking kids. So they got to come to the doctor with them. They might have to come to the nail salon with the bitch. You want to get your nails done? You got to put the baby on the caviar. Get your nails done, toes done. I've never done that. But I'm just saying, like, you really don't know the situation. Like, the laundry got to get done. You know, I got to go outside. I got to go to the doctor. I got I shit to do. Redeem got to go. She got to come with me. The baby got to come with me. Period. Like, the fuck? Like, so... These are the things that like, teach me, like, damn, it really paid them out. You want the fucking business. You don't know what you be going through. And, like, and these things are, like, big things. So, it's like, you really don't know people's situation. And I've always learned that, too. Even with the past situation, right? I say, in terms of your safety, too, it pays to mind your business. Because you don't know what the fuck people was going through, right? So, you might say some smart shit about somebody, just like, some could say with the Chris Rock Will Smith thing, right? Like, stop fucking playing. Like, pay the money, bitch, bitch. You want to talk about her head being fucking bull? You want to make a joke about her head being fucking bull? You ain't know that bitch had alopecia. Like, it pays to mind your fucking business. Like, that type of thing in a sense, like, or as well for him to stop playing around. But you really don't know what people are going through. You don't know people's story. You don't know people's situation. You don't know what the fuck is going on. Like, you don't fucking know. Like... Even little shit. Like, the other day, like, me, if I wear sneakers, I gotta wear socks. I'm like, bitch, I can't find a matching pair of socks. I wanna leave the house. I got the fucking baby. I put up my fucking sneakers. Somebody be like, why the fuck this bitch don't got a socks on? I'm fucking tired. I can't find the fucking socks. Pays to mind your business. It's not that I can't afford them. It's just I can't find them. And I have to leave. What do you want from me? <laughs> like, I'm just saying, like... You don't fucking know. Another thing, too, like, we're having a baby. I just be like, why her hat don't match her outfit? Bitch, the hats be going missing. The pacifiers be going missing. You can't find the fucking socks. Everything be going everywhere when you have a kid. Pay some of your fucking business, bitch. I put on the first hat I saw. She need a hat. It's cold outside. Now, if I ain't have a hat on her, you be mad. And then you be like, why she don't got a hat on? Because it don't match. Because she ain't have a matching hat. 
You get what I'm saying? These hats be falling off their fucking head like it's nothing. You get what I'm saying? So it's like, and it's funny when I say this because that's this saying it pays to mind your business is the saying that older people say and it's just th these type of things that I teach myself every day just shows me um with age comes wisdom like cause I feel like every year I learn something new and you become more elevated like and you become less judgmental I think I talked about that little part too like how when I was young I used to be so 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 judgmental about every fucking thing because I hadn't experienced life yet so you just assume like why would that person do that people need to get their shit together blah 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 or even too with like money and shit like I used to think like, oh, people need to learn how to do money management, blah, 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 blah. You start getting older, you start getting bills, you start getting issues, you start getting priorities, and shit happens. You know what I'm saying? Life happens. Work. Like, you you could, people be losing their jobs every day, be, niggas get laid off every day, be like, I mean, I haven't got laid off recently, but I'm just saying like, before COVID, niggas used to lose their job out the blue, okay? Like... You get what I'm saying? Like, you just don't fucking know, like, people's situation. Like, people be making, I'm like, oh, how they money get fucked up like that? Or how come this person, or, like, people do that with relationships, too. I could be like that. Like, oh, she mad old as fuck. Hell, man still got her working. Y'all don't fucking know. That nigga probably had bread and lost bread and she had to get back up on her feet and she had to work or something like people don't know you don't fucking know like it was something else too that one is too big of a secret <laughs> but that's another that's another thing that told me it pays to my mom's fucking business too like it's any mad shit especially like the more you like learn about people and just like life like everybody's situations and circumstances is so different that things just can't come so easy you know like even with celebrities and singers and rappers like they be grinding 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 and just some of them just happen to make it big but we don't like know their story so sometimes people just think like a lot of people like people who are immature just think like success just comes with the with the territory like you get what i'm saying like i can't explain like i feel like i like kind of lost my train of thought but like people think that everybody could just be successful and you can, obviously, if you work hard and you push hard. But I do think that in some ways, things can be circumstantial in a way. Like, oh yeah, I agree. I think that everything is circumstantial. You know what I'm saying? And um, I just, I just noticed that. Like, even with me, I'd be like, fuck, this happened, that happened. It's just like life just hits you and you gotta move accordingly like you gotta move with the fucking times like you just have to like um even to um i was talking about one and then she, we was talking about like child care child care is so expensive that's another conversation but um she's telling me like this girl pay 165 a week for child care which is considered really good in new york city like that is amazing and then she was like, I was like, I mean, it's doable. 165 a week is actually doable if you really think about it. Like, I was thinking about that because, like, when I stopped working, sometimes I used to, like, order Uber Eats. And I'm like, damn, why is it so easy for me to pay my bills now that I'm not at work and I'm getting less money because I'm on short-term disability? I'm not even getting a full check because I'm not ordering food every day or putting gas in my tank as much. Or it's like certain things, costs are getting cut that's allowing me to have more money. But basically, you could easily spend $100 on Uber Eats a week. Easily. Or if you like to go to Starbucks, I used to get breakfast in the morning. So, bitch, I used to be buying your breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Okay? Sometimes. No fucking cap. So, I was like... I was saying to my mom, I'm like, 165 if you cut some things off, if you the type that like to, you know, get your hair done. I remember when I first moved out by myself, I started doing my box braids by myself or whatever. I'm like, I can't be out here, you know, paying $200, $300 to get my hair braided, and I got rent to pay now. So, it's like, I was like, yeah, you know, you got to start cutting costs, you know, you got to, uh, you may can't pay for your hair, bitch. You better watch a YouTube video, learn how to put on a fucking wig. Learn how to do some braids. You make can't do your nails. Maybe you want to buy press ones. You gotta learn how to cut costs. And she was like, Yeah, cut off the cable. Yeah, some people still got cable. Or streaming services. Me and Femi got like 10 streaming services, bitch. 10 streaming services, $100 a month. I'm like, Why do we have all these streaming services? 
And you don't even be paying attention to the shit you, your card is ringing up. Like, with streaming services, any type of subscription, you're not even paying close attention to that. I even have apps that I pay for. I had to look the other day. I'm like, I don't use this shit. I don't use this shit. Even if it's $2, $3, I don't give a fuck. I don't use that shit. I don't want it. Per. But, um, it was just, like, crazy. But I remember we was talking about, like, I was saying, like, you have to just cut course. So, some people will look at you and be like, yo, why the fuck she doing her own hair now? Or, and yes, we shouldn't give a fuck about what people say. But I'm just saying, this is why I pay to mind your business. Because all shorty had to cut course on her hair, her nails, cable, all the shit, just to put her child in child care. And I think that's a big... I'm not saying that this person did that. I'm saying these are the ways, you know, sometimes if you got to set your own priorities. Like, obviously, somebody got to watch a fucking kid. So, those are things you would do. You just got to cut costs in certain areas. And people be making up things like, oh, why she don't do this no more? Because, bitch, I don't have the money. My daughter needs an education. My son needs an education. Like, you don't know people's situation. And, and at the end of the day, cutting costs on things, or a lot of these things be just luxuries. Like, Respectfully, yes, I think your hair is top priority. But there is ways to do your own hair and it look dumb nice. Like if you really like take your time doing a braids, your shits might look mad nice. You just gotta take your time or whatever. Press ones look mad nice. I mean the the glue ones, those shits look mad nice or whatever the case may be. Um, you might can't vacation as much and shit like that. You know, some people be like, oh, I'm gonna do this today. Yo ass, maybe you don't need to be buying Uber Eats. Uber Eats is a luxury. Like some of the stuff that people be looking at, people like, oh, why she couldn't do that? Why she couldn't pay for this? Why she couldn't pay for that? Half of that shit is not necessities. Like these things aren't relevant to me. Somebody say why she couldn't pay for her rent. That's a, a question to ask. What's to say? Why she didn't pay to get her hair done? Or why didn't she get new shoes? Or he get this? Or things that's dead that's not really that important. Like if you really think about it. Like the shit that people be like really questioning. Don't even be important shit. You get what I'm saying? Like a lot of times we be like making up people's life off of things that's really irrelevant. Like for instance. I wasn't posting on social media. Yeah, I wasn't supposed to process. Well, process means a lot to me. But I was just saying, like, I technically don't have to post anything on social media. Social media is just an app. Like, Instagram is an app. Twitter is an app. TikTok is an app. Those those things are not required of us. Like, we choose to do those things. Like, if we don't have social media, it's not going to impact our life in any way. It's, it's really not important. Technically, it's just something we want. It's a way to keep up with family and friends and shit like that. But you could respectfully call them. You could go visit them. Okay? A lot of my family live right in New York. I can get right in my car and go see them. Personally. You know what I'm saying? Um, so, a lot of things is like, oh, she hasn't been posting on social media lately. Am I required to? Technically, no. Even though it's, it's something that's of my character. But if one day I decide to stop doing it. It should, it can, it, it can be alarming, but even somebody might ask you like, oh, you good? You'd be like, yeah, I'm doing very good. They'd be like, that bitch lying. That bitch ain't posted social media in eight years. No, I'm good. I just one day woke up and said, this is not something that's for me. And it, it's not even because I'm depressed or anything. I just was like, yo, this shit kind of getting annoying. This shit kind of a dub. It's the same way things fall out of trend. At one point, we had MySpace, and that was gone. Is MySpace depressed? Like, it's not. It's just like, eh, I'm kind of over it. Like, MySpace died. Vine was a thing. Remember Vine? Mm -hmm. One day, we were always like, eh, this shit's kind of whacked through it out. I used to be on Snapchat a lot. One day, I just felt like they have a fucking Insta story. So, why am I doing this in this, you know? I mean... Sometimes you just be like, I just don't like this shit no more. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's nothing deep-rooted. Like, so a lot of times we just judging people off of things that's dead-ass not even a requirement of any of us. Like, we're not even required to do this shit. Like, you get what I'm saying? So it'd be mad funny how, like, you could kind of, like, judge people from things. And even still, too. Like, remember I said, oh, you shouldn't bring your baby out in this time. Yeah, the... the when I actually... Ugh, that's such another story. Ugh. When I was at the hospital, we spoke about that because my husband had wanted to do a naming ceremony. It's something that Nigerians do, Yoruba culture, basically, like, 
the mother, the father of his mother, his father, the grandmother, sometimes sisters, like people in the family give the child a name. And you do it the seven days after the baby is born. It's more deep rooted. I won't get into it. But I was kind of like, uh, I kind of want to name it somewhere only with COVID. Like all these things, whatever the case may be. So I was like talking to the doctor there so that he could hear her say, like, the most you should bring a baby out is after a month. Have people around the baby is after a month. Not a big deal. Yeah. Some doctors require, say you should recommend it, right? But technically it's your fucking baby you can do whatever the fuck you want in hindsight like people tend to forget like realistically nothing a lot of stuff that we judge people on is not really a requirement like i'm not even really required to do this shit and you're creating an idea about me because i didn't do something that is a norm you get what i'm saying like i'm not required to do none of this shit I don't give a fuck about none of that shit. About none of that shit. Like, a lot of shit we not even required to do when we getting judged off of it. Like, this bitch, I don't know, didn't do her eyebrows. Technically, I'm not required to do my motherfucking eyebrows. I'm required to be me. So, we kind of judge people off of shit that we feel is the norm. And it's just something to pay attention to, too. It was something else I was to get to. That's a bigger... It's fine. I gave you a short part last week. I didn't even notice it was so short. But another thing I was thinking, too, and I kind of lost my train of thought, was, like, we kind of, like, have so much, like, expectations of, you know, people we expect so much and we, like, I don't know, like, it's just weird like and I was just thinking like like what I was saying in the beginning of the episode like how sometimes we kind of like think things and we don't want ourselves to think things because then it's like anxiety but like do you feel like maybe the things we think sometimes are about people who are correct sometimes I think but what percentage I think depending on how well, you know the person. Hmm. 60? 60% 60 of the times you write about what you're thinking. 60 ain't a bad ratio. Unless, unless, because it's very rare. Like I said, I feel like yes, people had a pretty say. Like my situation, in my opinion, is rare. Like, honestly, if, if let's be honest. If I was not pregnant, and I stopped posting on social media and I stopped wanting to hang out with people and I was not pregnant. I probably am depressed. I'm not going to lie, right? Even though I know I'm not required to do social media. I'm saying for me, if my friends know me and my family know me, yes, that is a red flag. I'm not going to sit here in front. Like that shit is dead. That's a red flag for Britney in some sense. And then, um, and two... You know, I would say, look, I just came on social media. I usually, I keep it 100. I'd be like, bitch, I'm stressed out. I'm depressed. Like, I was, when I say I'm depressed, yeah, maybe. I don't know. I haven't, I've been depressed, but not like in a long time, no. Like, so I'm pretty sure I would have said something. Like, when they was asking me, am I good? I was like, I'm doing good. I'm, I was really good. I was happy. I was pregnant. Um, so yes, those things are like red flags. Um, I guess. I don't like the word red flag. Red flag is like, yes. But I'm just thinking like, yeah. Even though I say it pays to mind your business, I do feel like we're right about people 60% of the time. Like I said, my shit is like a... Like, for me, is like... Now... Now, you know, I made it hot. I'm, what's that? What they call that? The boy who cried wolf. The girl who cried wolf. Now, the next time I start moving funny, niggas gonna probably be like, that bitch pregnant. <laughs> they gonna be like, that bitch is definitely pregnant again. I wonder, like, if I get pregnant again without hot, I probably would but not like so intentional does that make sense like if somebody suspects it like or if they like if they if they, if somebody was to like say Brittany are you pregnant and I'm 26 weeks I'll just be like yes vice versa like this pregnancy if somebody would have asked me was I pregnant at 26 weeks I would have said no 
You know what I'm saying? Like I was hiding the fuck out that shit. Maybe the next pregnancy, I would st I wouldn't tell people outrightly. But if somebody kind of suspected it, and I'm over for me, I know people do 13. For me, 25 is my cap. Maybe if you ask me 25 and up, I'll probably say yes. Now even bitch, maybe 30. I don't know. I don't know. I would hide it, but if you if you going in, you going hard, you going in, or maybe if somebody asks me out to eat and I come up and I show up with a big belly, I'm like, bitch, yeah, girl, pregnant again, I'm a hoe. <laughs> like, that type of thing. Like, it wouldn't be so, so hidden. Like, I wouldn't be so pressed to hide it type shit. Like, it, it would be like, if they see me, they want to hang out and they want to chill and I just so happen to be pregnant, then bitch, I'd probably let them know. I don't know. We'll see. But I wouldn't make it like this... I don't know, I'm, but like I said, we're not, I'm never, never really, even if I didn't experience what I experienced before, technically not, I've been to tell people I'm pregnant. I'm not. And in some ways too, I'm technically not obligated to go anywhere I don't want to go. Like if somebody asks me to hang out and I can't hang out, I'm not obligated to hang out. Like in hindsight, and I love my friends and family, but I'm not obligated to. I'm the type of person I love hanging out. Like as soon as Jimmy asks me to go to Mom Sushi and I'm not pregnant, been with this baby for what, over a month now, a month and a half now. Yeah, I'm going the fuck out and I'm giving my baby to my parents. So, you know. Yeah, I, th I like this episode. So, I hope you guys enjoyed this episode. It was very randomized. It was on my mind. It was on my heart. Heavy. And, yeah. Follow me on Instagram, underscore Baristagram. Make sure you guys subscribe. Make sure you tell a friend, a family member, a cousin, a sister, a brother. Share, like, comment. Follow me on TikTok too. TikTok. Yes, TikTok. It's Brit Says One. That's something I want to do this year is trademark Brit Says. Like, this year I want to wanna try. I'm going to pay for so much shit, but you know, God got me to trademark with, well, yeah, trademark Brit Says. Let me not have that pay. Um, what else? Yeah, follow me. Subscribe. Thank you guys for listening. Thank you guys for tuning in. Make sure you, oh, I said that, subscribe. I'm just trying to make sure I just get everything because I didn't hit the mark last week. And, yeah, I will see you guys with next week. Bye.